Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on trigonometry. We are almost at the end of trigonometric equations. We'll now apply the concepts of trigonometric identities to solve examination style test question on trigonometric equations. The question here is prove the identity cos theta divided by 1 minus tan theta plus sine theta divided by 1 minus cot theta equals to sine theta plus cos theta. Then find the general solution for cos theta over 1 minus tan theta plus sine theta over 1 minus cot theta equals to sine theta minus cos theta. Now from examination point of view, one of my suggestion here is that in case you fail to do the first part, you can actually correlate uh, these two and complete the second part. So you can at least do part of the question. The second thing here is that not always will you be given a situation where the method of solving equation is given to you. Many times you'll be only given the second part of the equation, which is cos theta over 1 minus tan theta plus sine theta over 1 minus cos cot theta equals 2 sine theta minus cos theta. So remember, the strategy here is to simplify the left hand side. And after that, solve equation. So what I'm trying to say here is do not mix them. Do separately because in examination that could be the purpose of asking the question. So strictly speaking, what you have to do is you have to do it in two parts. So let me at present write them as part A and part B. Right? So let's begin with part A, which is to prove the identity, which is cos theta over 1 minus tan theta plus sine theta over 1 minus cot theta. So first step should be to write tan and cotangent in sine and cos. So we get cos theta over 1 minus sine theta over cos theta plus sine theta over 1 minus cos theta over sine theta. Correct? Now, we can take common denominator in the denominator. So we have cos theta over. So here we get cross multiplied. So cos theta minus sine theta. Divided by cosine theta. Plus we have sine theta. Over sine theta minus cos theta divided by sine theta. So this flips and goes on the top. You get sine square theta. Here you get cos square theta, right? And the denominators, we have cos theta minus sine theta and sine theta minus cos theta. We're looking for sine theta minus cos theta type of a thing. So let me just to rearrange them, right? So, so we could actually rearrange with a negative sign here. Okay, so, so let's rewrite this as cos square theta over cos theta minus sine theta. And in this particular case, we'll write this as minus sine square theta. Let me tell you the reason for writing minus here. We want to make the same denominator. So I'm bringing this cos theta first. I'm taking negative common. So I'm writing this as cos theta minus sine theta. Is that clear to you? It was actually sine theta minus cos theta. So we flipped it. So we took this minus outside, correct? And that is how we get it. So, so the result here is that we got this minus sine and cos theta minus sine theta, clear? Now they have the same denominator. That is the advantage. And in the numerator, we have cos square theta minus sine square theta. Correct? 
So let me rewrite the numerator in a different ink since I'm going to have a little space here. So we have here cos square theta minus sine square theta. And in the denominator, we have cos theta minus sine theta. Is that clear to you? So the numerator has the difference of square. So whenever you have difference of square in the numerator, you could always write this as sum and product. Correct? So let's take it on a new page. I'll rewrite this and then uh, we'll continue. So we have cos square theta minus sine square theta over cos theta minus sine theta. Clear? So we have difference of square. We could write this as cos theta plus sine theta times cos theta minus sine theta over cos theta minus sine theta. So remember, whenever you have difference of squares, you could easily write as in the fa factored form. So if you have a square minus b square, it could be written as a plus b times a minus b. Clear? Now, you get one of the factors cancelled and therefore what you get here is a simplified form which is cos theta plus sine theta and that is the right hand side. So we have done the first part now that is proving that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Is that clear to you? Now let us solve the equation as such. So let's take a fresh page to solve the equation. Now in the equation we are given cos theta over 1 minus tan theta plus sine theta over 1 minus cot theta equals to sine theta minus cos theta. Now this is not an identity. The first one was the identity where we showed that the left hand side is actually equal to sum of sine theta and cosine theta. Correct? Now the right side is sine theta minus cos theta. So that gives you 2 cos theta equals to 0. So that is the result. Now we need to provide general solution of this particular equation which is 2 cos theta equals to 0. So easier way is always to look into the cosine graph which is starting with maximum going to zero and then minimum and then continuing right. So that is the general graph. It has zeros at two points in one cycle and these two points are 90 degrees and 270 degrees and will continue to have these zeros at the integral multiple of these points. That means we have to add 360 degrees integral multiples of 360 degrees to our answer correct so that is how you could get your zeros you could also say odd multiples of 90 you can also say odd multiples of 90 degrees i'm just telling you how to write the general solution a general way of writing this answer will be what well we are seeing that the answer is multiples of 90 and that to odd multiples of 90 degrees. So we could write this answer as theta equals to 90 times 2n plus 1, where n belongs to a set of integers. Does it make sense to you? You can try it out. If I substitute n as 0, for example, 0 is an integer, in that case I'll get 90 times 1, it's a degrees. And if I substitute n as 1, we get 3 times 90, which is 270. By substituting negative values, we get the other answers on the negative side and higher values for n greater than 1. So that is how we could actually solve this particular question. I hope the steps are absolutely clear, right? So that is how you should be solving it. So the key strategy here is to, one, simplify the left-hand side. So key strategy. Simplify left hand side and then solve equation.
right? And remember how to provide answer in a general way, which also we learned. I hope that helps. Free, free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.